I saw you swaying and <laughs> nodding the head and no doubt tapping your toe. That's a good thing, isn't it? We are travelers and strangers, as it were, traveling through this land. Well, welcome to this house and place of worship and house of prayer. It is a joy and a delight to have each of you here this morning. If you are longtime visitors and Attendance here at, at worship, welcome again. If you are first time here, we are glad to have you. It is a joy to have also the Bluegrass Band with us this evening, this morning, I should say. Yes, good to have you. If you would stand in body or in spirit, let us worship the Lord with this opening litany. Our God, our help in ages past, and trust we come today to worship you. Our God, fill our hearts with songs of deliverance. Our God, our help in ages past, in hope we come today to worship you. Lord, when we are afraid, we will trust in you. Our God, in anticipation of your gracious blessings on us, O oh Lord, we will trust in and we will have hope in you. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, no, be stand for the amazing grace.
Now you may be seated. <laughs> it is amazing grace that we enjoy our Lord and have hope in all the goodness that God has for us in Jesus Christ and the power of the Spirit. But we recognize, too, that we are still a work in progress. We're still on a journey through this life. And so as we journey forward, we seek the Lord in this prayer of confession, being honest with God, but also looking to God to heal us and make us whole and bring us life abundant. Let us pray. Let us join in this prayer of confession. Creating God, we confess that we have viewed our lives as being of little significance in the larger picture of all that you have created and continue to create. Yet in your mercy and love you have claimed us as your own children, and we thank you for this gift. Help us then, we pray, to live a life that is worthy in your sight, wisdom to live in the image of Jesus Christ, Wisdom to know what the fruits of your Spirit make a difference, even in small ways. Surely then we will have kept the faith in your name that endures forever. And all God's children say, Amen. Friends, remember that you were baptized into the life and the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. What that means for us, what we proclaim week after week, is that God is not finished with us. We can begin again and again and again. We can be renewed in life again and again because of God's saving grace, amazing grace, in Jesus Christ, we are people of profound hope and vision. People, friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. This is a time for people who are young or young at heart. If you want to come down and sit with us, we would love to have you. If you want to stay where you are, you can still be part of the conversation. I see some. They're going to come down from all the way up there. What do you think? We'll wait for them. They'll make their way. And you know what? I'm going to sit down because this little guy, he gets heavy. Is that all right? Should we sit down? Hey, guys, come on. We're so glad to see you today. We're glad you're with us. I have a question for you guys. I'm Pastor Emily. It's good to have you. Do you ever get tired of, be yes, just in general. Uh, yeah, I get tired too. But I want to ask a special Specific question, do you ever get tired of being told, you're too little? You're too young? Do you ever get told that? I'm sorry, you're too little to do that. I'm sorry, you're not quite old enough to do that. Like, what can't you do yet? Because you're too little or too young. You can't drive, can you? <laughs> no. Some people can't reach the wheels yet, or the, the pedals yet. I bet when you go to, if you go to an amusement park... There's sometimes rides you can't go on until you're a certain height, right? That's kind of a bummer. It's a disappointment. Uh, what else can't you do? Sometimes you can't play on a team or do a sport because you're not old enough yet to join that team. Do you ever hear that? I'm too, you're too young, not allowed. I bet all of these adults in this room remember a time when they, didn't, they were told or they didn't think they were old enough or big enough to do something. Well, there's a story in the Bible where there are some people who don't think that they're quite ready to follow Jesus. They know what Jesus is about. They're pretty excited about the message he's giving. He's healing people. He's sharing love. He's, he just seems like a pretty awesome person, and they want to follow him, and they want to be faithful, but they just don't think they're quite ready yet. And I got to thinking about that this week, with, especially with young people who, who maybe are told they're not ready yet or who just don't think that they're old enough or big enough yet to follow Jesus, right? And you see some adults, like mostly it's, it's adults who are pastors, right? 
or mostly it's adults who get to um, be in leadership in a church. But here's the thing. You are never too young to follow Jesus. You are never too young to be a leader in your church. You are never too small to do the things that Jesus asks us to do, which is to love one another, to stand up for somebody who might be being bullied, to show kindness to someone who's going through a hard time, to ask someone if they're okay, if you see if they're upset. You can do all those things, right? You don't need a driver's license to do that. You don't need to be a certain height or a certain age to do those kind things. So sometimes I think, um, you know, people always ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Do you hear that a lot? You think about that a lot? There are things you can do right now that are so important, just as important as any of the things that any of these grown-ups can do to be leaders in the way and following Jesus. And that's pretty amazing. Because sometimes children are the best teachers to us adults. Adults, can I get an amen on that? Amen. Amen. So I want to say thank you for doing the things that you do because you're just the age you are and you're just the person you are as people who follow Jesus. How about we have a word of prayer? What we do in our church is, is I'll say a line and you repeat after me and the adults join in with that too. So let's have a prayer. Thank you, Jesus. For loving us and calling us to follow you. Help us to remember that no matter who we are, how old we are, how big or small we are, that we can show the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm so glad y'all are with us today. And if y'all are visiting, I hope you come back and see us sometime again. All right? Um, If you want to go back to your seats with your folks up there, you're welcome to. Or um, we have a children's area, too, which is back there. And Miss Cindy um, is is our leader back there. And it's up to you and your parents what you want to do, okay? Either way is good with us.
Yes, keep on the sunny side of life. I don't know if you know the story of that song comes from the Carter family. They had a relative who was paralyzed from the waist down, and one day he was being coming down the sidewalk. It was an autumn day. It was kind of cool, but he was on the sunny side of the of the walkway, being taken in his his wheelchair, and he made the comment, "Keep on the sunny side of life." And one of the Carter family members said, "That'll sing. That'll sing." <laughs> That'll sing. Keep on the sunny side of life. Yes, indeed. We want to keep on the sunny side of life. I want to read to you, though, what is, might be considered a dark, a dark passage. is about Jesus asking people to come and follow him. And he keeps getting a response, no. Even though he gets a, an enthusiastic response at the beginning, Jesus says, I'm afraid your enthusiasm is ill-placed. So let us listen now to this word that is given to us from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus and his disciples were going along the road, and someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to, to him, Foxes have holes and birds have the air, of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me, but he said, Lord... First, let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And the other said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my, ha- my home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Well, one day Jesus asked some people to follow him. And they basically said no, and they had an excuse. I need to bury my father. I need to say goodbye to my family first. Now, it seems like a harsh statement on behalf of Jesus. said, let the dead bury the dead. And anyone who looks back, who's plowing, is not fit for the kingdom of God. Sounds very harsh, but you have to remember, Jesus is a Middle Eastern man, and they tend to say things in a, in a very hard way, in a very flamboyant way, an over-the-top kind of way, such as, remember Jesus said, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. It doesn't mean things literally. But in this case, I think Jesus is saying that, there, that I am a not just a part of the list of things to do. I am at the top. I am a priority. And once you see this, then you will understand. But I recall that all of you here were asked to follow Jesus. Do you remember when you said yes? You did say yes because you were here. I take that for granted. I take that for granted. You said yes. And so you were here thinking about Jesus, worshiping with Jesus, singing hymns and listening to bluegrass hymns with Jesus. You were following Jesus. Isn't that marvelous? Because I know and you know you could have come up with some really good excuses not to be here today, just like those people long ago. Really good excuses. What's wrong with burying your father? What's wrong with saying goodbye to your family? I would have expected Jesus to say, well, yes, you do that first. You do that first, and then you come and follow me. That's what I would expect to Jesus. But Jesus is reminding us of what our priorities are in life. What are our priorities in life? Now, you know, you, you could have said, made a good excuse not to be here today. You could have said, well, you know, I heard long ago that Jesus loves me, this I know, God loves me. I heard that long ago. That's pretty much it, isn't it, preacher? I don't think I need to come to church anymore. I got it. It's all in place. It's done for. It's set. It's good. Good to go. Reminds me of that that wife who one day and a group of friends with me, her husband was there, and she said to us, "My, my husband, he never tells me I love you. And the husband said, Well, I told you I loved you when we got married. If anything changes, I'll let you know. (laughs) 
Really? I happen to think that repeating certain words and phrases throughout our life on a daily basis, a weekly basis, is a good thing. Don't you agree? Amen asked for an amen earlier. Can I hear amen? Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, the point here is that, yes, you don't just hear it one time. I got it. It's important to hear it over and over and over again. Because it resonates, it echoes through our lives. And that's so important. But we have some good excuses. We could have had some good excuses not to come here this morning. I want it set in the record, whoever our clerk is here at the meeting of this uh, congregation this morning, put it in the record, that it does not say that when Jesus asked people to follow him, no one stood up and said, I'm too old. And I like the way Emily used that. She says, I'm not too young either. All right. That's it, isn't it? Now, I mean, because, I mean, after all, you could say, I'm too old to follow Jesus. I don't have many more days left in this world. I've got a bucket list of things to do. I've got plans, you know, plans on top of plans. I don't have much time. Life is short. After all, I heard Jesus say, I love you long ago. Doesn't that cover it? Got it covered. Got it covered. Well, it's not an excuse, is it? Point of fact, we are not too old to follow Jesus. I don't care how old you are. You're not too old. I was talking with my mother-in-law just yesterday. She'll be 102 here in a couple of weeks. And what was she talking about? She's talking about my granddaughter. Is she going to Sunday school? Does she know about the love of Jesus? Oh, yeah. Evelyn, she knows. She's going to Sunday school. She knows. You're not too old. You're not too old. I'm thinking about young people. Emily is speaking with the young people. You're not too, too young. You're not too old. You're not too young. Heard a child say, she was talking about what do you want to be when you grow up. Emily was talking about it. I heard a child say, when I grow up, I want to be a hero. I want to be a superhero. I want to be a hero. Isn't that marvelous? Isn't that just marvelous? What that says is that the wor there's no scarcity of good in the world because us adults, we tend to think there's not enough. You know, there's just not enough. There's not enough. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough talent. I don't have enough health. I don't have enough of this, that, or the other. You name it, there it is, isn't it? It's just not a it's scarcity rules for a lot of us who are older but not for the young child who has a vision and a dream, who's dreaming that I can make the world a better place. I want to be a hero. I want to help people live better lives. Isn't that just marvelous? Just absolutely marvelous. What a dream. I don't know if you know the... The author David Brooks, he's written this marvelous book, The Second Mountain. And he describes, he uses that as a metaphor to say that there are two mountains in our lives. The first mountain, we're all climbing this mountain, okay? We're all climbing one of these mountains all the time. There's two mountains in our lives. The first mountain is what you're going to do with your life. It's basically about your career, what you're going to do with your talents, your time, What are you going to do? That's the first mountain. And we spend a lot of our lives, in our early part of our lives, climbing that first mountain, don't we? A lot of energy, a lot of time spent figuring that one out, struggling to get to that mountain. The second mountain is about who we are. Who are you? And that's the mountain about my dreams, 
my character, my morality, who am I? What do I value? What is important? Who am I going to be rather than what I'm going to do with my life? And that is the most important mountain you will ever climb. And we've been climbing that mountain since day one, haven't we? And it continues on. I don't care who you are. I think, can I dare say it? That the reason, one of the reasons that you came here this morning is because you're on that second mountain climb, because you're interested in who am I answering that question. Who am I? What am I about? What's important about being alive? Who's important in my life? What is my life about? So that when the day comes when you die, you can say, I have lived a good life. I have done, I have done well, Lord, in your sight. Bring me home. That's what we're talking about. So how's it been going climbing that second mountain? It's not easy, is it? It's not easy at all. If I were to ask you, how's the climb been? You might say, well, to tell the truth, I have been, it's true, I have become wiser and I have become, I think, a better person throughout the years. And I do believe that I'm going to grow to be a wiser and better person in the years to come. But likely many of us here are also sin, but I'm seeing more and more of my shortcomings as well. I think that might be another reason you're here this morning. I know my faults. I'm seeing where I can be a wiser person, a better person. I'm not too old to learn new tricks, as it were. Dogs might not be able to learn new tricks, old dogs, but old people can. Sure we can. And by the way, I see a good number of older people here in the audience this morning. But all of us are growing old, aren't we? Older? I don't care how what your age is, we're all growing older. And what we are seeking to do is to grow wiser in the things of God, in the love of God, in the kingdom of God. I can begin again. Yeah, I've got a lot of failures in my life. I know that I'm not perfect. I know that there are a lot, there's room for growth. Absolutely, I know that. On this second mountain, you don't have to tell me. I know it's absolutely true. But I can begin again because God is with me. I can grow. I can grow wiser and better. A deeper relationship with God and a deeper relationship with other people. I'm not too old. I'm not too young to follow Jesus. So that's where we are. We're not looking for an excuse. We're looking for an opportunity to grow in, in deeper ways with God. As God calls us to love God, Jesus tells us to love God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and to love others as we love ourselves. As Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. I hope there is a deep joy in your heart as you sit here and come here and worship here, recognizing all of these gathered here today want to grow in deeper ways in the love of God and Jesus Christ and the power of the Spirit. Wow! What a dream. What a profound dream. Emily said it earlier. It's well worth repeating again. Remember when you were young, someone said to you, what do you want to be when you grow, when you grow up? Remember that? What they were asking you about is, what do you want to do to make money? That's really what they were asking you about. The truth of the matter is,
we want to be when we grow up. We want to be people who follow Jesus, who bear the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, the Apostle Paul says, is joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, trust, gentleness, self-control. That's quite a mountain, isn't it? Fruits of the Spirit. Friends, we're at the foot of the second mountain, maybe halfway up, I don't know, but the second mountain is before us. Jesus is with us. And do you remember what it is said by the Apostle Paul? Jesus died for us. Jesus rose for us. And Jesus prays for us. Let us continue to grow with Jesus. Amen? Amen. If you will stand in body or in spirit with our affirmation of faith you have in the bulletin. God has, friends, what is it that we affirm? God has created us for a personal relationship with Himself that we may respond to the love of the Creator. Life is a gift to be received with gratitude and task to be pursued with courage. People are free to seek life within the purpose of God to develop and protect the resources of the world for the common good, to work for justice and peace in society, and in other ways to use our creative powers for the fulfillment of human life. Amen. Please be seated. Again, I welcome you to worship here at First Presbyterian Church, whether it's your first time or your 50th. We're glad that you are here this morning. We're especially grateful uh, for this wonderful music. My little one has learned the word song. Shong, shong, he said. I think he's here for the music, and that's all right. If you're here for the music, we worship God that way too. So thank you. If you'll take a moment to uh, fill out the friendship pads that you find in your pews, this helps us be aware of those who are uh, new to our worship, but also uh, helps you as you pass the, the um, book down the aisle to notice the names of those who are sitting around you that you may not otherwise know. The back of the bulletin is full of information about things that are coming up in the life of our congregation. Hope that you can participate in any or all of them and our church calendar too. If you have questions about any of those, please contact the church office. Now I invite you to join me as we turn to God in prayer this morning. Let's pray. God of love and mercy, God of peace and reconciliation, God of all people, we pray this morning with thanksgiving for your grace that exceeds our understanding. How wonderful it is, God, that morning by morning you offer us new mercies. How completely amazing that you look at each one of us with eyes of love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The hard truth, God, is that we don't always see your new mercies. And we certainly don't look at all of our neighbors with eyes of love. Starting this day, we pray, will you help us see this beautiful world and all that is in it anew? Will you help us look not just with our eyes, but with our hearts to see the hope and possibility and holiness all around us? It is from our hearts that we offer our prayers this morning, O oh God, not only for ourselves, but for your world. For the healing of ravaged land, air, water, plants, and animals by storm and pollution and greed, we pray. For communities devastated by war and senseless violence and terrorism, we pray. 
for neighbors who look at each other with suspicion and even disdain, we pray. For people who have lost hope, who have come to the end of their rope, who are ignored or worse, deliberately mistreated, we pray. For people who have no home, for people who will barely scrape up a meal today, for communities struggling against disease or illness, we pray. For people called to serve others, to practice healing, to provide for the safety of every citizen, to teach, to clean, to govern in fairness, we pray. For those who provide calm in the midst of life's chaos. For those who listen with discerning ears. For those who offer wisdom, even at great cost, we pray. For our church. For this family of faith. For each member and friend who makes their way here. For our collective discernment of your holy word and divine will. For our humility and gentleness with each other for the needs we seek to fulfill in mission, we pray. God, we ask so much, and we ask it all with faith that you hear us and that you do indeed respond as you have responded to your people from the very first breath of creation. And so with the voices of countless saints who have gone before us, and with the voices of friends and strangers alike gathered together in this, your holy house this morning, we now join our own voices together to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue to worship God with God's tithes and our offerings.
Let us pray. Loving God, we offer you these gifts because we are so grateful, because we know of the abundance you have given us in this life. And yes, it's true, we wait for the place where our souls will never die. We wait in hope and longing and faith for the place where the sun never goes down. But for this time, we ask that you would bless the gifts we give for those who have dimmed eyes, for those who don't know the goodness of your love. May these gifts be blessed to serve in ways that might spread this good news all over the world. We ask humbly in Christ's name. Amen. Friends, depart now from this place of worship and prayer. Remember that life is short. Do not waste this time, but be eager to show peace and grace and kindness and love to others as Jesus did. Friends, go in peace this day and all your days. Amen.
Thank you. Thank you.